Hey everyone, it's Kelly. Some of you may have some of you may have heard the news that quinacridone gold is going to go the way of the dinosaur. Well, they also told us that 17 years ago when P uh, what's it called? PO49 ran out. Now, PO48 has supposedly run out. So, I'm going to go through and walk you through the different colors that you can use, no you don't need all of these, to mix your own version of quinacridone gold. What are you going to need supply wise? First thing is you want a palette and you want something that is non-porous. What that means is you do not want to be mixing paint on your paper directly. You want either a plastic, wooden, or glass palette or even a piece of wax paper or parchment paper. Something that isn't going to absorb the paint. You want it sitting on the surface. Uh, the other thing I like to have is a pencil for taking notes. The paper that I'm going to be swatching my colors on. A palette knife. So that's what I'm using. And also paper towels to be wiping off your colors. If you don't use blue shop towels, these are great when you're done wiping your colors off. Open the paper towel back up, let it dry. You can use these things for months over and over and over again. Then, as I throw it on the floor, you want to make sure when you're done with this session, whatever colors you're mixing, have a piece of scrap paper. That way you can go through and swatch your colors on scrap paper and you can reuse this in an art journal, mail art, whatever. Um, one other thing, you'll see me swatch my colors on scrap paper like this. You may decide that you want to instead take the colors and put them in a journal. I've seen other people use like an index of um, what do you call it? Blank, blank cards. Anything that you can figure out the best way to compile these notes and it will work for you and make sense for you. That's what I can't stress enough. So the colors I'm using today, again, I'm going to be swatching out quinacridone gold and then I'll explain these mixtures as I go. So I'll set these aside for right now and throw them on the floor again and go through and tell you what we're going to do. So the first thing, you want to swatch out the color that you're going to be trying to replicate. So that's the quinacridone gold. So I don't need too much of this. Now the other thing that you're going to see me do is since I'm not painting anything, I'm only swatching colors, I'm not going to use a ton of paint. I want to try to conserve the paint. Um, one of the things that I hear people say is that they're worried that if they go to learn how to mix their own colors, they're not going to be able to replicate them ever again. If you keep doing this, and if you limit your palette so you don't use a ton of colors, and if you take notes, and you do it again and again and again, the more you do it, the more confidence you get. And it, it will get easier, trust me. So the first thing that you want to do is on your scrap paper, or whatever you're swatching, you want to take the color you're going to be replicating and you're going to go like this. So this is what's called mass tone. And what it means is it's how thick the color is. It's, it's when you look at the color, this is what you see in whole. But you want to take your knife and you want to scrape it down like this, not the whole thing, leave some of it as, as it was a minute ago, so you can see the undertone, you can see what the color actually is. So I'm going to clean my knife, you'll see me do this a lot, and let's see what colors we got to go with. So the very first color combination that I'm going to use is quinacridone magenta and greenish yellow. When I went to do this, what I tried to do is I really wanted to use the colors that I had on hand. I didn't want to have to go out and buy anything, so I'm going to walk you through different recipes of color combinations that you might have on hand. So the pigment that is in quinacridone magenta from Holbein is PR122. Why is that important? Why are you going to hear me say that a lot? because 
you will buy, you know, you might go to the store and you buy quinacridone magenta from one company, quinacridone magenta from another company, and you get home and you notice they're two totally different colors. Instead of just looking at the names on the label, you really want to start to pay attention to the pigment numbers. It really will start to come into play a lot more so with certain colors. Like Payne's Gray, in my opinion, from everybody other than Holbein, is not worth buying. It's a totally different color across the board. So it's just something to be aware of when you start painting and mixing, layering, and buying colors. So from Holbein greenish yellow, the pigments are PY129 and PY154. So again, PY129, PY154. Golden, the pigment numbers are totally different. Um, I don't have green gold, but I wrote down the numbers a minute ago. They are for golden, it's PY150, PG36, and PY175. So see what I mean? Like it, You get a totally different color depending upon the pigments, the order in which the pigments are mixed, etc., etc. All right. So when you go to start mixing your colors, the other thing that you want to be aware of is you don't want to start with a darker color. You always want to start with a lighter color. Now that might be a little bit confusing when you're looking at a green gold versus the quinacridone magenta. One thing about the quinacridone colors is that they're called staining, S-T-A-I-N-I-N-G, staining colors. They tend to overpower any other colors with the exception of phthalo, but we're not going there today. Um, that's what happens. They just start to kind of like butt heads. So when I go to mix these colors, I'm going to start with whatever my lighter color is. For me, that's the green gold. I'll pick up a little bit. Okay, I try to pick up. I'm working on my, I always work on my easel, so sometimes the paints will start to run down. I leave my palette upright like this. So you want to really make sure that you're mixing these colors together. You don't want to have little bits of green or little bits of magenta. All right. So I'm going to pick up this color. swatch it out like this and scrape down the undertone. So this color that I just mixed is more so almost like a quinacridone burnt orange. If you go to start mixing colors and you don't get the color on the first go, obviously please don't beat yourself up about it, but also um, keep in mind Make notes. Write down the colors that you're using. Write down the pigments and the manufacturers with what you're doing so that later on you can replicate this. So, what I forgot to do is I'll go through and do this. I'll swatch out the Quinn Magenta and I'll swatch out the Green Gold. That way later on I know these two colors will make whatever's underneath here. And then I can also, like I said, take notes of the manufacturer's name and the pigment number. PO48, PY150. You think I would have it memorized by now? I was never very good taking those kinds of tests in school. And then I would write the same notes up here. Um, some people like to write, okay, you know, four parts this color to one part that. Whatever works for you, whatever will help you to remember, I want you to do it. I usually just leave them in like a little column like this so later on I can remember what I'm doing. Then you could go through and start to figure out what color do I want to add to this puddle, so this mixture of the Quin Magenta and the Green Gold. 
let's see what happens if I throw a little bit more of the greenish yellow aka green gold into the mix and again make sure that you mix it up scrape it out swatch it out let's throw the rest of the green gold remember what I was saying at the beginning I wanted to try to start with colors that I had on hand I didn't really want to have to go out and buy anything so we're starting with these colors because I figure a lot of you are going to have either the green gold or greenish yellow and the Quinn magenta on hand so it's not perfect but it still makes some really pretty color mixtures so again that's the green gold aka greenish yellow and quinacridone magenta. So I'm going to wipe my knife and we're going to get another two colors mixed together. So my next two sets of color are going to be burnt sienna and quinacridone magenta. So I'm not going to squeeze out any more quinacridone magenta, I've already got that mix right there, but I am going to squeeze out my burnt sienna. Now this brand that I'm using is the Utrecht, it's the heavy body, I tend to be a, a heavy body acrylic person, and it's the pigment in this is PR101. So again, Utrecht PR101 and I'm mixing it with the quinacridone magenta. So let's take some of this. I'll swatch it out up here. And their burnt sienna is a really pretty color to begin with. Swatch out the magenta. Take those two colors, move them over, and pick up the burnt sienna. Notice again, starting with just a little bit. Now let's start with somewhat equal amounts. So go in. This is one of my favorite colors. I love mixing brown with yellow and brown with different blues. You get some really pretty color mixtures. So again, this was equal amounts of the burnt sienna and quin magenta. So clearly it's not quinacridone gold, but it's a pretty color. So let's see what we can add to that. Let's take some more of the burnt sienna. mix it with that little puddle of color so still not the color that we're going for but again it's a really pretty color can you tell yet that I really love mixing colors and experimenting in different ways so even if I don't always get the colors that I want the first go, I always think it's still going to be a learning experience. So keep that in mind. So again, I'm taking this mixture that I've got. Let's throw more burnt sienna into it. So I recommend that when you go to start mixing colors and painting, you really want to limit your palette and try to stick to colors that are single pigments as much as possible. You'll get cleaner color mixes. Oops, I forgot to wipe my knife down, don't tell anybody. 
the other thing you'll notice is that the how shall we say it the craft paints usually do not have pigment numbers on them and the reason why oh, it's for a few reasons but craft paints are mostly binder and very little pigment so while they do have pigment in them you know you're, you're, you basically get what you pay for so one of the nice things about working with a limited palette with the more professional line of colors is that you can get cleaner color mixes and stronger vibrant colors you know again you don't have to go out and buy every single color that's out there so again this is not quinacridone gold it's getting more to be like quinacridone burnt orange and it just would be interesting to see what happens if you go in and you keep mixing more and more and more of these colors into each other but these aren't the colors that I would you know they wouldn't be my first choice for the mixes so let's do the next set of colors the next set is going to be transparent red iron oxide and Nicolazzo yellow. So the pigments in this, this is Sennelier, and transparent red iron oxide, there's three of them. It's PR101, PY42, and PR102. So again, PR101, PY42, PR102. And then in Holbein Nicol Nicolazzo Yellow, it's PY150. So let's squeeze some of that out. that in a minute. All right, so now what's going to happen is let's start by swatching out the nickel azo yellow. It's always a little awkward mixing the colors in the palette uh, on an easel like this, I mean. And then, so again, this is the transparent red iron oxide. So see what I mean about most people might not have these two colors, but they might have the other colors. And the more you sit and you play around with them, you might be able to mix up what you're actually looking for, especially if it's like a Quinn burnt orange. But again, these are transparent red iron oxide and nickel azo yellow. So let's take the nickel has a yellow. Let's take some of the transparent red iron oxide. You can already tell by looking at it, it's not the color that I want, but I really like this color. So scrape it out. that so you can see. Take the same mix. Let's throw, I know sometimes I forget too. Let's throw a little bit of transparent red iron oxide into the mix. You always want to start with the lighter color and throw the color into the lighter color. You don't want to start with black and throw white into it. You want to start with white and put black into it. That is pretty close to over there. So what if I throw more of, see what I mean? I forgot to wipe my knife down. What if I throw more of the transparent red iron oxide? So I can keep adding more of the darker color into the mix. So 
like this. And eventually get the color that I want. So again, that was with the um, Nicolazzo Yellow and Transparent Red Iron Oxide from Sennelier. So then, let's do one more set of colors. So the last set is going to be Nicolazzo Yellow again from Holbein, remember PY150. And then another company whose colors I really like are Old Holland New Masters Classic Acrylics. This color is Quinacridone Rose Deep and the pigment is PV19. So Quin Rose Deep PV19 mixed with Nicolazzo Yellow. And I have to say, when I did this earlier in my Art Life class, this I think was my favorite. I think. We'll see what I say tomorrow. So I'm going to move this just so I have a little bit more room. I'm going to stick my finger in it. So I'm going to start with Nicolazzo Yellow. Let's swatch it out again. So. Nicolazzo Yellow with the Quinn Rose Deep. So I'll take a little bit of Quinn Rose Deep and start to mix it into I also like when I'm swatching out, I tend to just swatch out small amounts so that I'm, if I'm working in a journal or if I have a large amount of color, I could go through and make many small mixes and swatch those out because you can get a whole rainbow of colors working with a very limited palette. So let's swatch these out. So see how close that is to the quinacridone gold. So let's do it again. I always try to make sure that I do the sides and the tip too. So let's throw a little bit more of the nickel azo yellow into the quin rose deep. it up. Look at that. That's pretty close to the Holbein Quinn Gold. So like I was saying earlier, if I had to choose my colors to mix the Quinn Gold it would definitely be the Nicolazzo Yellow with that Quinacridone Deep Rose or Rose Deep from Old Holland Masters. So I'll have some information written up in the notes and if you have any questions let me know. I'm going to go through and use up these colors now on a piece of scrap paper. I would encourage you if you have the time try to mix colors together on a regular basis. If you can't do it every day try to do it every few days or on the weekend. You know, if you walk away from a paint session with a whole bunch of colors like this, instead of scraping them off or letting them clump and, and get hard and dry, take them together and start mixing them all together in different amounts. Write down the notes. I'm going to go through later on and write down the colors that I use, the pigments and the manufacturers. Anything that will help you to remember what colors you're using. 
So if you got any questions, let me know, and I hope you found this fun and informative. Thanks for watching. Bye.